Hey guys, Harrison one I'm back at it once again with a brand new video for you, and welcome to episode 19 of the online racer for Formula 1 2013 online multiplayer gameplay featuring real life Formula 1 topics worth talking about. And today we got another big one. Uh, today, after 21 years in charge, Luca de Montezemolo has stepped down as head of Ferrari. Um, not really the biggest shock in the world, to be honest. Apparently, a lot of the backstory, according to what Jalopnik was saying as well today, um, he fell out with Fiat Header, and I think, I think his name is Dino Marchioni. Um, uh, they, they disputed the future of the company, the future direction of the company, um, how the, the direction that was going in, as well as um, the direction of Ferrari as a racing team going forward. They didn't see eye to eye on that. And as a result, after, like said, after 21 years in charge, Lucas steps down. He turned Ferrari around. Um, many, many people fail to realise this, that you know Ferrari went, went on a, I think it was a 21-year cold streak of not winning any any world championships. And Luca was a big reason why that turned around. Well, he was able to find success again, brought in Michael Schumacher. They had that dominant spell between 2000 and 2004. Their car sales tripled as a result of that. They became the, one of the biggest global brands in the world as a result of Schumacher's success. And Luca was at the head of that. You know, he he, you know, he gave guys like John Tott a start, Ross Braun. That was a dynasty of a Formula One team. And uh, yeah, now none of them are left. It's it's crazy. Um, and it kind of sums up just how messy a situation it's been for Ferrari this season and how the whole situation with them this year has been an, a, been a complete mess. I mean, Luca isn't the first guy to quit the team this season. You may have forgotten that former team principal Stefano Domenicali um, resigned, and I use the term resigned with inverted commas because I don't truly believe he did resign, but um, he resigned... Um, I think it was off the three races this season. I think it was just off the China, between China and Bahrain. Um, he resigned, and I, I still like to believe he was jumped. He, he jumped before he was pushed, and I think he was going to be the full guy for what was a fundamental problem with Ferrari across the board, and I'll talk about that more later in the video. But they replaced him with Marco Mattiacci. He was the former head of Ferrari's USA development, you know, Ferrari becoming a more establishable brand and marquee um, car company in America, and um, but he had no Formula 1 experience going in, and many people were saying he was just another puppet for Luca to pull the strings with at that Ferrari team, and you know, another guy that would dot his I's and cross his T's, so to speak, and you know, for better or worse, that, that became Ferrari's thing, and you know, it's it was an ideal. The Menacali was respected. He was liked throughout the paddock. I, I liked him a lot. I thought he was a very passionate, witty, intelligent guy and very likable. Um, and I think he did a solid job with what he was given, which, in my opinion, wasn't very much. Um, and how does replacing him with a guy that has no Formula One experience prior ever be considered a good thing? I'm, I'm not entirely convinced that, you know... That move was was for the better. Um, Ferrari has shown no improvement since then, and if anything, they've slipped further since then. Um, but why why is Ferrari not working anymore? And I've done a bit of thinking, and I've come up with a couple of possible reasons. I mean, for last time Ferrari won any major championship was 2008, and that was their constructors' title with Felipe Massa leading the charge with Kimi Räikkönen kind of unmotivated and you know he wasn't at his best in 2008 but despite that he played the support role well for Felipe Massa it was a role reversal because in 2007 it was such a close title race that Massa was in contention till the penultimate round and Raikkonen would go on to beat the McLarens by a single point um, but it was a role reversal Raikkonen was unmotivated was unable to get to grips with the 2008 car pop properly and kind of gave up um, while Felipe Massa had his best season in Formula 1, a season with six wins and probably should have been world champion that year 
if you believe in karma and luck. Um, ever since then, they've struggled. 2009 was a year dominated by Braun GP. And 2010, 2010, they came very close overall. That was their best year as a team because Felipe Massa was still somewhat competitive in 2010. And Alonso, as we all know, was a prime title contender until Abu Dhabi where he couldn't get past Vitaly Petrov. Whoops. Um, so as we all know, Sebastian Vettel, you know, the, the outside shot, won the title instead. Um, 2011... Red Bull were dominant out of the box. No one was able to catch them. 2012, Alonso came close individually. He had a superhuman season to try and, and to try and unseat Sebastian, who wasn't in a dominant car for once. 2012, I still stand, I still stand by this. 2012, there wasn't a dominant car. Um, McLaren, Ferrari, Red Bull were all very close, and Fernando Alonso was very, very close. In fact, he forced out two of the best career drives of Sebastian Vettel to ret for him to retain that title at the end in Abu Dhabi in Brazil and I think Alonso was just three points away in the end and you know that that rattled the Ferrari team I mean they weren't close as a constructor they were too busy fighting McLaren at the time and Lotus because Red Bull had a much more consistent team package of Red Bull uh, of Sebastian Vettel and Mark Webber Felipe Massa was starting to let the side down at this point and as a result the team struggled but Alonso individually was a carrier he, he did a brilliant job for them so that that was the thing um so after that, 2013 was a mediocre year for Ferrari. They they lost out to Mercedes for second in the constructors and Lotus. If it wasn't for Raikkonen's injury and you know his very convenient pulling out of of the season, Lotus I think could have been in contention to to try and stop them as well because Grosjean was starting to show some real promise. So, but why has this all happened? You know, why have they not won anything major since 2008? They've been a little bit unlucky, so to speak, but I think part of it is their the way their team is structured. Having a 1-2 driver system has its benefits, but also has its flaws. It only really works if your team is dominant and at the front regularly. If, if you don't have a strong car in terms of a car that's right at the front... You know, you a 1-2 system doesn't work because you're leaving too many possible points on the table by having a support driver that's not good enough. This is why Ferrari worked in the early part of the 2000s, because Rubens Barrichello was a solid driver in his own right. And whenever Schumacher did have a minor slip up, he was there to clean up the mess. And he was a guy that could very well win races on his own, and he did. He won 11 Grand Prix in his career, Barrichello. So... In his own right, he was able to be a solid number two guy who could win on his own, but also would, would always score solid points to back up Michael Schumacher. If you're in a if you're in a field where one guy is challenging for podiums and the other guy is in seventh, eighth, ninth place more often than not, like Ferrari were in the past with Massa and Alonso, it's not gonna work as well. And it's like I said, you're just you're just leaving too many decent points on the table. Um the team has not developed their cars particularly well in recent years. I mean, I think I think their team's been fundamentally flawed in terms of development and money. They've they've been too conservative, in my opinion, over the last few years. Like, you know, they they'll wait for another team to develop instead of you know gambling themselves. And their cars are incredibly reliable, and that's a good thing, of course. You know, you want to be reliable, but they've never been the outright fastest car in the last time period. They started 2013 pretty strong, but then the tyres changed and they, went and they were unable to adapt and they ended up becoming mediocre again. And that's a significant flaw. Maybe Ferrari should think about sacrificing some of that reliability and taking a chance and trying to extract some more performance out and, you know, take a gamble rather than, rather than that. Rather that than constantly coming second or third all the time. Because, unfortunately, given Ferrari's own incredibly high reputation and expectation of winning second and third place just won't do anymore and as a result they've got to find a way to get better um you know this season is a prime example of that ferrari even broke their conventional mold of a lead driver and a supporting driver and they made an all-out play to get Kimi Raikkonen. And that hasn't worked either. If anything, I think, I think Kimi Raikkonen has, has been given a, a bit of a pass by a lot of the media and the fans for struggling in that Ferrari. I mean, the main guy people like to point out when struggling this year has been Sebastian Vettel in his Red Bull compared to Daniel Ricciardo. But 
is an even bigger spell of dominance with Kimi Raikkonen compared to Fernando Alonso. Alonso has finished in the top six of a, of a Grand Prix 11 out of 13 rounds this season. Kimi Raikkonen has one top six finish this season. One out of 13 races. Like, and in race performances, he's he's down 11 to 2 compared to his teammate. And when it comes to the points difference, it's a landslide. There's over 100 points between them. It's it's ridiculous. Like, people like to mention, like, Red Bull's difference between Ricardo and Vettel, but there's an even bigger one between Alonso and, and Raikkonen, whose career stats are pretty similar. And a lot of people thought Raikkonen could push Alonso this year. Turns out it was the other way around. And, you know, that's not worked out either. And I feel a little bit bad for Fernando Alonso because he's caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, Eddie Jordan and BBC F1 called him a prisoner of Ferrari after the, the Italian Grand Prix because he knows what's going on. He knows that he knows that Ferrari is not good enough to win a Grand Prix right now or to win a championship and they're lagging behind and have done for a little while. The problem is there's no one else better that's going to give him an opportunity to, to try and win again right now. I mean, the only real, even half-realistic shot is McLaren, who are a midfield team now, and their switch to Honda is an enormous gamble. We don't know how well Honda's going to perform next year. If Honda are a bust, then what's the, why would anyone go to McLaren besides a bigger paycheck? If it does work out, then why would McLaren change their driver lineup around? I mean, they could do, they could attract a lot more people if their car is actually decent next year, but that's pretty much up in the air. Kimi Raikkonen is probably going to retire at the end of next season. Apparently Raikkonen has already made it quite clear that 2015's season will be his last. Jules Bianchi, it's going to be a matter of when, not if Bianchi takes over. And then where do they go from there? Do they go back to trying to sign Nico Hulkenberg like they tried to do last year? You know, they back they backtracked on Hulkenberg at the 11th hour when he could have been a very solid guy to have in that Ferrari seat. But again, they, they, they turned their backs and then when they found out Raikkonen was available, then they go with, with their GP2 guy, Rafael Mor Morciello, who is, an, again, another very solid driver in himself and has a lot of plaudits in GP2. Do they go after someone like Sebastian Vettel or Lewis Hamilton, a headlining, another headlining centerpiece? Do they go back to their Schumacher style principles of old? It's an interesting one, and there's a lot of possibilities. And, you know, it, it leaves an, a lot to the imagination. But where do you think Ferrari's gone wrong? Where do you see their driver lineup going forward? Why do you think they failed? And what do you make of Luca's resignation? I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts as always. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you guys later. I've been Harrison101. Thank you very much for watching, and sayonara.